Choose to challenge is an interesting phrase because challenge to me requires courage. And so courage is one of those qualities that has served me very well in my career because to be an HR professional requires challenging the status quo, um, having the courage to speak up in tough situations, um, asking questions about things that require more visibility and making sure that everybody's rights and equality and, uh, and equity is really, fairness prevails. And so it's really a matter of having courage. And so that's what it means to me is to speak up with courage. There is this unconscious bias that we spoke of in our round table. And I do think that that is a challenge. And I, I think there's a lot of good intentions or well-intentioned leaders that believe that they want a more diverse workforce and they are, they're making strides in bringing in women, particularly into to management and to leadership roles. But the challenge is this unconscious bias, or at least it has been for me, particularly in this male industry, uh, male dominated industry. And so I, I think I've really, really tried to navigate that quite carefully and quite intentionally. So I, I try and dress the part and it doesn't mean you need a lot of money to have, you know, nice clothes, but it does mean that, you know, how you show up and how you present yourself is really important. We talk about unconscious biases and I think we as women need to challenge our own unconscious biases, um, how we present ourselves every day and how we want to be seen and, and perceived. And so I think that's something that we need to be more deliberate and intentional about is, you know, how we show up. So that's part of it. I think the other part of it is we often, for me, I'm a servant. I mean, I say servant uh, lightly in that I'm a servant leader. And I'd love to think that I can roll up my, my shirt sleeves and jump in and get my hands dirty and things and show that I'm willing to serve others. I'm in a support function. I lead support functions. And so you have to be somewhat servant-minded, and I say that um, sincerely, um, without any, you know, disrespect to anyone. Uh, but we are here to support as a support function, and I think that we have to be very careful about the kinds of tasks that we are so willing to do. And so, for example, as I sit on executive leadership teams and even on boards of directors, oftentimes they may be the only woman at the table, um, and when that happens. I don't want to be the person as quick as I am to offer like, hey, I'm going to get up and get some coffee for myself. Can I get anyone any? Um, or I'm taking my dirty dish um, from the meeting out to the kitchen and you know I start collecting because that's what I do. I just, it needs done so I pick up the dirty dishes and I take them to the kitchen. And I don't think that serves us in a professional setting. And as much as it requires some humility and being willing to be a servant um, in, in the best sense of the word, uh, to be a willing player, I, I don't think it serves us as women to be so quick to be the note taker and the person to go grab the coffee. And I think we have to be very careful about those things. And so I, I've really worked hard uh, to, to show humility, but also to serve, um, to serve as a high bar for professionalism behind my role and being so lucky to be at the table and to really take that into the fullest sense of the world of saying, what more could I do to leverage the platform that I've been given to support employees? What more could I do uh, with the resources I have available to me in my position to really benefit those that need more support within our organization? And whether that be gender or any other areas that you know diversity and inclusion should cover, I think the bigger an organization gets, I think the more educated and experienced HR leaders need to come prepared to, to advance human rights, to advance equality, to advance um, the company's strategic plan. And so as organizations grow, I think the bar needs to be raised in making sure that those that we are hiring into HR actually come equipped and prepared to do the job that they're being hired for. I think historically speaking, and this may date me now because I've been in the field for 30 years, but I do think back when I first joined HR, although my degree is in human resources, my master's degree is in organizational science and human behavior, 
I do believe I've invested to become highly educated in the field in which I, I choose to, to be a leader. But I think historically speaking, a lot of people kind of fell into HR because they liked people or they wanted to help people. And they never really were properly trained to do something with high levels of excellence and best practice. And I think unfortunately, there is still a stereotype of that where there's a number of people in HR that are well-intended, but don't necessarily come with the training to actually do something that's really meaningful, um, especially for, for bigger organizations. So that's my perception of the stereotype in the field. I do think that has changed dramatically over the last 30 years um, since I've been in it. But I do think, again, that we have to, to hold ourselves to a high standard of what HR is, is equipped to do. And that requires not only having the right people in the right spots within that organizational uh, chart for HR in the company, but it also requires some leadership, whether that be the CEO, the COO, the CFO, those in C-level positions, including the board of directors, to value the real contribution that HR has to make in organizations. Um, and for me, my moral compass and my true north, as I've come to call it, is really to make a lasting, impactful value to the business. And so it's more than just doing the job. Um, HR is typically seen as a transactional role. And in order to get earn the right to be a more strategic partner in the business, you really have to be exceptional at delivering what I call the block and tackling of the day-to-day -day transaction part of the business. If we can't deliver what the business needs at its bare minimum, the right people at the right place at the right time, you know, uh, supporting and being a champion for the values of the organization and the culture that's been defined by the leadership team and the board and the CEO. If we can't get excellence in standing up the function, then it's really hard to make a lasting impactful value on a strategic standpoint. So I, I really think the role has to be set up, but the person who fills it, it's really a, I don't want to say it's a burden, it's an obligation, it's a calling to really make it and shape it to be the most impactful role for the organization. And I know that's why I joined Chemtech because I'm really driven to make a lasting impact. And I saw this as an excellent opportunity with a CEO like John Gilley, who's so committed to people and performance and an incredible culture of empowerment. I mean, that was really motivational to me as fertile ground to come in um, and plant my roots um, to grow the practice from this point forward. Um, as a newfound organization, especially in light of what's coming ahead with um, the acquisition that's been announced. I'm really looking forward to having a larger platform to really make a lasting impact in so many people's lives and partnering with the operational leadership to really develop an incredible culture and to really develop people to be all they can be in our new company. So I'm super excited about it. I did not have female mentors uh, going through high school um, and even college. Uh, I didn't have women in my family or in my close friendship circle that were in professional roles. And so I didn't really know what I didn't know. I somewhat stumbled around just trying to find my way on what do I want to be when I grow up. And I think somewhere in my late teens, early 20s, I decided um, through the influence of a male mentor in my college education that I really wanted to, uh, to try an internship in HR. And so it was that influence of that male figurehead in my life that got me into HR in the first place and did an internship. And there I found the, the head of HR being a woman and it was in a hospital. And I was so inspired by her. Um, she was one, I think she was the only female on her executive team in the hospital system back then. That was a pretty big deal. And she just brought such poise and grace and professionalism, such empathy and patience. Uh, and I was just so inspired. She, and since then, um, there's been few women in executive roles over the last 30 years um, and more so over the last probably 10 years that I've had the pleasure of working with, whether they be chief financial officers or general counsels or you know, chief marketing officers. I, I've come in more and more contact with senior executives who happen to be females. And you know what, we really support each other. And it's not that we are, are need help, 
But actually, I think that the influence of their being role models to me have been more impactful. I really look to senior executive females to really be a beacon of light for me on what does excellence look like. And there's some women that I, I just put out there in my life as, wow, shiny role models of what professionalism looks like, what what really making a lasting impact and, and is to an organization, what they're born to do, what they're gifted and talented to do. And when you find that, they become those sources of, of light and aspiration for me. And I, I try and surround myself with women like that because it reminds me of what I'm capable of becoming. It could be podcasts, it could be, you know, Oprah Winfrey or Renee Brown, or it could be women that you don't even have a personal relationship with. But go out and find those people for yourself that inspire you and, and do something about it and listen to those podcasts or participate in those uh, webinars and, and really look for those kind of leaders in your life to, to have someone to, to mentor you and give you shiny examples of what leadership looks like. So I would say embrace your, your gender, embrace um, that you have more support than you know, generations have had in the past and, and seize the world. There is a lot of opportunity, more opportunities for women than there ever have been. And, and seek to make a difference and, and don't shy away from having the courage to challenge. Be driven from, I guess, your inner light within um, to, to really to value yourself and your contribution in the world. And, and really not be discouraged by, by things that get in your way, but have them make you stronger um, and, and more determined more than ever before to be all that you can be.